Hello, hello. Welcome back to Go On Around. And in the video today, I want to go over configuration file for Kubernetes. And specifically, I want us to understand YAML configuration file. The reason why I'm doing this is because you're going to see YAML format used for most of the Kubernetes files uh, configuration um, as you play with Kubernetes. And I didn't want to make the assumption that people knew YAML and we continue to just sort of write YAML configuration files. So I figure we'll take a slight detour, but it's not that far off because it's still related to what we're doing. And we'll just try and learn and at least understand a little bit of YAML. Now, I'm not going to try and show you everything with YAML. I'll mention some things, but I'll show you enough for what we need to do and what I've seen used in YAML. And then if there's anything else, I'm pretty sure we'll just pick it up on the way. All right. Now, I'm also pretty sure that everybody knows JSON. The reason why is because I did some videos a while back within the series about encoding data in common separate value, XML, and JSON. So um, if you haven't looked at those videos or you don't know JSON, you definitely want to go back. It's in the playlist. So now that we know where we're starting from is that the assumption here is that you know at least JSON. Let's jump in. And again, we're going to shoot them in this about 10 minutes, no more than 15 minutes. So let's get started. So what I've done is um, I'm in a directory here and it's, you know, Kubernetes, you know, episode 2606. And what I hope to show you at the end of this, not only that you can write Kubernetes resource configuration in YAML, but you can also write it in JSON and both works. So then why would you want to use one or the other? Well, that's because most of the time people use JSON for data exchange and YAML for configuration. And we'll see that all YAML is a little less verbose than JSON. So it sort of makes sense that if you're going to do configuration, you want to minimize the amount of noise or information somebody may have to consume or look at to understand what's going on. All right. So what I'm going to do is I simply have a Go module file and it doesn't really have anything other than the module name. So you can create the actual text file if you like or use the Go mod command in it up to you. And what I'm going to do is just create a main.go file here and package main. And I'll create a function. And what I want to start with again is to make sure that we're the same page. And on the side here, um, you guys know this already, I showed you a while back this command called air that if you install it, you can just run it and it monitors your the directory that you run it from and it looks for changes to go file and then it automatically rebuilds it and runs it. So I show you guys that already. So again, that's inside um, one of the miscellaneous videos this time. So that would be a couple months ago. And so check out the miscellaneous video. Same going to run playlist, but miscellaneous video. So let's start off with something very simple. So let's say I have a value. And it's a very simple value. It's the integer, so it's 42. So no controversy there in terms of what this is. And I want to encode it to JSON. So we'll say JSON that Marshall, and um, we'll just invoke the JSON Marshall function. You can see it returns a slice of bytes, which I'm going to put in a buffer. And I'm not going to care about error right now because I shouldn't have any. And then what I'm going to do is say I want to print this out. And so printf and I'll print this out as a string and um, then I'll just say buff. And so if you look there, you can see, and so let me put a new line at the end of this. And you can see on my screen back out there, I thought this is just giving me 42. No surprise. That's all that this is. So I want to make sure that we understand how to just what simple values look like when you encode them or types. And so if my type was instead a string, and so it was, let's say, Jane Doe, for example, and again, I encode that. If you look at what it looks like in JSON, it just looks like a string. So again, nothing interesting there. So we have very basic types, like integers or floats, and maybe we can do a float also. You can see it's nothing, 3.14, and it's going to look exactly as you expect. And um, booleans are going to be the same exact same thing. So if I do true, you're going to expect to see this get encoded as just value true. Okay. So what about things that are slightly more complex? Let's say something that's a collection, right? Like this, 
an array, for example. So if I'm at an array, we'll say let's say three values, and it's an integer, and so now I put value one and two and three, for example. And now I have that encoded. What does that look like? And so in JSON, you can see when it's an array, it just puts a square bracket and then the values. Now it sort of doesn't matter um, what that type is because if the type of those things, like instead of int, it was strings or whatever, well then it just put array, um, a square bracket around it, comma, and then each object would be the same thing. So for example, if I change this now to say string, and then I do this, and I say, let's just take this example, foo bar, foo and bar. Now we can see it all. Okay, this is just a, um, a um, but the reason why it showed up with an empty one is because I said this is an array of three elements, and one of them is I left out. But if I said it was a slice instead, well, you know, you'll see that it still gets encoded in JSON this way. So again, each value now of this array gets encoded the same way. Now, what if I want to mix type? So, for example, I want my array here, for example, to have a number 42, um, a float 3.14, maybe a value true, and um, yeah, maybe something like that, right? Now, this is certainly not a slice of string. This is a slice of a bunch of different types. So the only thing we can do now is say interface, um, and then we can say this is an interface, a slice of interface value, which means you know all these different things and of course it gets encoded accordingly now um, since i'm using the new version of go i can say any which is an alias for interface um for interface okay and so that there again nothing surprising it's just now repeating what we have shown before what about the other thing that we might have is a map so a dictionary hash map, that sort of thing, but in Go we just call it a map. And so we can say we have a map of string, and maybe we have a map of string. Let's do string to string as the first thing. And then again, um, I want to create a set of values here. So now um, let's do this, name, and then let's go age. Let's do so security number. We save that and then we'll get um, this encoding. As you can see, age, name, da da da. And, and that makes sense because everything is also string. But the important thing now is now I'm doing a map and notice this for in JSON, it used a curly brace to encode those values, okay, instead of square brackets. So square bracket is a list, curly brace is for a composite where each there's a name or key for each um, thing and then its value right key value pair and so what if I wanted to do like I had before many different types in the array but no this is a map so I can do any again and then no this is no longer a string but rather a number 42 of course that's a still a string but you get the idea and of course that still works and it gets encoded accordingly. So I'm going to leave um, this value v, v and what I'm gonna do is create a type, and a uh, struct type. And I'm gonna say type person, for example, and it's gonna be a person struct. And let's just say I have name, then I have age, which is an int, for example, and then I have social security number, so now what I want to do is create a second value that looks something like this. So I will just uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, let me just type it out so you guys can see it. So I have v2 and I call this equals to person. And if I do person and then I do that and I say name, I will say John Jendo. I'm going to say age 42. And then social security number, and let's just go with this, okay? And now I want to print this out, so I'll go with this. Now we should have, uh, oh, this is now two. Uh, all right, so 
if we look here, we'll see that we're printing out age key. Now, this is the first one. So this was the map. Now we're printing out a struct, but you notice that compounded object, not collection, but compounded object, is using the same curly braces. Now, the only difference here is that the key um, take on the same name as the struct. So I'm using uppercase. So how do we make it do the same thing? Well, we add the tag fields. So if we do that, now we can say, you know, just essentially when you encode with JSON, give it this field, the lowercase name and age, and then omit it if it's empty. We don't really care about that part. We can ignore this if we like, we could take it out. But since it's not empty, then it wouldn't matter for us in terms of the values there. And then if we look now, we'll see that this is lowercase, um, just like what we had before. The difference is now our struct, the order of it um, is different. Um, when you encode the struct, it's in the order that it appears in the definition, whereas for the map, it might change the order. But at least the two things are exactly the same. And if I do this, I switch this around, um, we can see that oh, they are indeed the same. So let us build. And so here you go, right? Why did I show you this? Well, I'll show you this to let you to illustrate that once you encode in JSON or any of those sort of thing, um, something like a map doesn't really look very different from a struct, okay? It's just a matter of um, how you encode it and how you decode it. Um, so if somebody were to encode a map and send it to you, you can look at this and reasonably go, oh, I have a struct that is a person with these field name and decoded. Or they could have sent you a struct value like we did here in the second case, and then you decode it as a key value, you know, as, as a map. So either way works. Okay, so now we know how to pretty much encode JSON. Now everything from this point just is just repeat, rinse and repeat. So for example, if I were to do and now when I go to initialize and then if you look here we can see addresses that's get null. So JSON know how to represent a null value. So let's just go here and now we can initialize, um, we can add addresses. So I was missing the colon. So now we encode this and it's all nested and all this other stuff and it's hard to read, but we can just copy it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go here, create a new file. I'm going to say output.json and I'm going to paste it here and you can see it's just nested and it's the same thing. It's just saying that oh, I have an object. This is a person. So open close parentheses and these fields and values. And then there's a field called addresses and it's a slice or array, right? And that thing has some values and each element in that is this. So if we wanted to have more, we can just have, you know, comma and put another object. So we can do it also in code. We can go here and say, I have a second address. So something like this. Arch. And we go back here to our output.json. I'm going to select everything, paste it, and you can see what this looks like. So again, this is saying, square bracket saying that oh, we have a collection of objects that's a list, and each one of these things um, are separated by comma. Each element is separated by comma, and then each element is just this uh, more complicated compounded thing. Again, right? Um, now we're using uppercase here because we did not say that they're all to you know what to encode each one of these fields so if we use this i'm going to ignore i'll leave it that it is and so you can see now it's a lowercase so now i am sure that we all caught up on json all right now let's jump over and take a look at um how to encode um yaml 
And I could use the YAML library that's in um, Go, but instead I'll go and do it online. So if you go to this website, JSON2, and two, the number two, yaml.com, and it is first going to load up with all this stuff in it. So you want to erase all of that, get rid of it. And when I was encoding JSON in Go, I could encode the number 42. But here on this website, um, I can't do that. But that's fine. We know how to encode that. But before we start encoding things, just look on the side here, and it's going to tell you um, that some of the things that you know JSON is generally used for and what YAML is used for. And so like I mentioned, YAML is tend to be used for configuration. It's called a superset of JSON. Um, you can actually embed some JSON in it. So almost any valid JSON is also a valid YAML. That's why it's called a superset. And um, basically, JSON is good for data transport or data exchange, and YAML is sort of suited for more configuration. I will see why. But Kubernetes allows you to specify your um, Kubernetes resources, define them using either. It's just because when you define your Kubernetes, you define yourself with a configuration of what a cluster should have. And so YAML makes sense. All right. So for JSON, the value JSON object is something that looks like this. This dash 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 is sort of like the operator, but we're not going to think about it. Um, but let's now put a value here. So again, this is an object. So we're saying that our, let's say, age is 42. And so this is a valid JSON document. And you can see when it's encoded to YAML, all you do is put the key name and the value. And notice how you did not have to put anything in double quotes. You didn't have to. You could. It still be valid YAML, but you don't have to. And the next thing is that if we were to add some more fields, um, notice how that gets encoded in YAML. Again, this triple dash up there just means like a separator sort of so um, between having multiple objects in the same file. Um, and so you can see how easy this is and you don't have to worry about all the quoting for your keys and values that you have to do in JSON. And it still means essentially the same thing. So it saves you some typing because you don't have to start out by putting this open curly braces. You don't have to put the double quotes. And what about if we have a, an array. So let's say we have numbers. And so this is an array. So in JSON, we can see that's an array of values. And so if our values is you know, one, two, three. And again, notice how in YAML, below the key that specify those collection, you would just separate each element with a dash. And that simply means that our this is an element of this, okay? And um, of course, that makes sense. Now, a more complicated one would be, what if we have more complicated objects? So for example, I had something like this, right? And each one of these things, again, represents something. Maybe I'm talking here about addresses like we had before. And each one of those represented some address. Again, notice there's a dash and, you know, curly braces. And so, what about if I start putting in the value now? And so now, as you can see, look at the difference. So that dash still means that this is an element, but it's the first object, the first object field, the first field in that object, in that element, sorry, the first field in that um, element gets a dash. And then the next field in the next element gets a dash. Anything that comes after is understood to mean to belong into that first element. Does that make sense? Let me write another example to show you what I mean. All right. And so now you can see again, the first element there is getting the, the field in the el first element gets a dash to say that, oh, I'm starting a new element in this array. Now, the way I think about this is I sort of look at this and I see it. It looks a little bit like if you do this. If I were to put this in line with this, then put this in line with this. And so now what it looks like to me is like, oh, we're starting a new element here. So oh, and we just use a dash to signify that we're starting a new element. And we started a new element here. So use a dash to signify that. 
and then we sort of get rid of this extra like you know this bit over here that's what it looks like to me and so here we're going to start a new element we go oh you know we don't need this extra bit but we're going to start a new element do dash and then whatever is in this thing so maybe city is not in this this third element doesn't have the street it just has city so we just start off with c and so get another city right and it doesn't matter right and but i mean this is on this side it's it's json so that's why it doesn't get encoded but if i were to put back you know but you see what i mean when i uh, the way i think about it so when i see the array so i don't really sort of get confused um well i see the element and i think about how they get it's getting encoded in yaml so that's it right we've seen how to encode values in from json to yaml so you can either write json if you're comfortable and then come to a website like this and have it converted or now that you can see the relationship now it's easy to write yaml when um you have to write it just sort of think about the mapping right it's a superset i think and there are a number of examples that if you look at the example that they had here in the um, before we erase it you can re refresh the site and see what it is there are a number of other features about um yaml that's really cool you can do comments and all this other stuff and so yeah you definitely want that and that's why it's good for configuration because you can make comments in it if you're going to do configuration you might want to make notes about why you're using a certain value or something and so basically that's it now the last thing i want to show you is let's go back to our code here and um let me do this uh, let me open this up no i'm not open it up let's say i change this from person and i call this resource or maybe even yeah let's call it resource That's all about it. Okay, so this is how I might fill out um, a value of type resource to create a pod. And then what I have here is the JSON representation. So let's grab this and let's go over here and stick it in our. I'm creating actually a new file and call it pod that JSON. And then I'll paste it in there. And this is what it looks like, right? API version, blah, blah. So all this you know already and thing. Well, let's just take this. Oh, actually, I just copied it. So let's just take it over here. Paste it here. And now you can see the JSON is a lot more than this YAML version. But look at this. This YAML is just what we would have written to specify a pod resource okay and what i'm going to show you now since we have done the yaml before this is going to work so i'm going to just use the json to show you that it works also so i'm going to do Control c clean up my screen and i already have my mini cube uh, my kubernetes clusters start running right so if i do cube ctl get pods um, i don't have anything running and what i can do is say cube ctl create or apply I can say minus f pod pod json and you can see it's created and notice i'm using json and if i go back here i'll see that i um, created that my stack if i go in i can see that um, my set of containers the redis one is running but the image url that i use for my server that's wrong um, and that's why that's not running i just wanted to show you that you can use json or yaml to um, do your specific um, your configuration files and it's just up to you which one you want to use um, as you can see this one is less verbose and it's just um, one reason why people prefer to use it and now you know how to do that and of course i can clean up now but that's it so um, i haven't been time in this video so i don't know exactly where we're coming in terms of time but this is enough and hopefully you learned something and see you in the next video um, before I take off, please do me a favor, leave a comment on the video, um, comment, let me know what you think, what you like, what you don't like, what I can improve, and if you haven't subscribed um, and you like the material, please do consider subscribing, I really appreciate it. Alright, bye.